Hello fellow problem solvers, today we're going to be doing an introduction to geometry. This is something that some of you have been asking for because I put some geometry problems which are a bit more difficult and now we're going to start building up from the ground up. So the first problem is, let ABC be a triangle, prove that there is a unique circle that passes through points A, B and C, and if O is the center of that circle, and we have that the angle BAC is less than 90. We're going to prove that the angle BOC is twice the angle BAC. And with that, we're going to talk about some properties of points on a circle, which we call concyclic points. So this is something that I'm not going to make you try. If you want to try it out, try it out for five, 10 minutes, but really I'm going to give you here an introduction. So what is a circle first and foremost? What defines a circle? A circle is a set of points that are equidistant from another point. That's what a circle is. So it's defined by a center O and a radius. And every point on this thing, on this circle, is equidistant to, to O as any other point to O. So with this, this is the definition of a circle. Now we're saying that if we have any triangle ABC, where we have A, B, and C, that we will have a unique, what's it called, a unique circle that passes through the points A, B, and C. And what does that mean? That means there's a unique point O and a unique radius R such that OA is equal to OB is equal to OC is equal to R. And how do we prove this? Now, there are many ways we can go about this, but the way I would like to go about it is to say, what is O defined by? And the answer is it's defined by being equidistant to these two points these two points and these two points, right? All pairs of these three points. Now, where are all the points that are equally distant from B as they are to C? And the answer is, they are points which lie on the side bisector. This is the definition of a bi side bisector of BC. So these are all the points here is by definition a line that goes through the midpoint of segment BC and is perpendicular to BC. And then everything here on this line is equidistant to B and C. So now what do we know? O, because O is equidistant to B, C and A, O must lie here. And now if we take another one of these side by sectors, say of A and B, take the midpoint here, a perpendicular line, these two will meet at a point, and we will call this point O. And now here's the thing about O. Now we're going to show that O is equidistant, that OA, OB, and OC are all the same length. And how can we show this? And the answer is well because O is on the side by sector of AB. That means OA is equal to OB. And on the other hand, because it's on the side by sector of BC, that means that OB is equal to OC. But OB and OC are the same. OB and OB are here the same thing. So we have OA is equal to OB is equal to OC. So we know that a circle exists. So now we know that a circle with a center O, when O is defined like this, and this radius passes through all these three points. Now the question is, why is this circle unique? And there are, there are going to be two things that I'm going to show you here. One, why is the circle unique? And it's unique because the intersection of these two lines is unique. O must be on the intersection of both these side bisectors. And when you have two lines, they either never intersect, 
they intersect at every point, i.e. they're the same line, or they intersect at one point. These are the three things that can happen if we have two lines. And here, the reason these two lines aren't parallel is because if this line, like we would have to go ahead and maybe improve that, that they aren't parallel. Though what I will just say here is that the angle they form with respect to B, this angle is 180 minus beta. If they were parallel, that could not be the case. And maybe there are better ways to go about proving this, but that is not something I will really focus on here. Now, what's important here is to see that O is also defined by the intersection of these bisectors and you might side bisectors and you might ask, but wait a second, why I've only taken two side bisectors. What about the third one? How do I know the third side bisector also intersects it here? How do I not know that it's perhaps something like this and that it doesn't pass through O? And then how do I not know that I ha don't have three different O's? And the thing about side bisectors is the converse holds true. What, what is the converse? We said that for a side bisector, any point on it is equidistant to the two points that, that, are, that make up the side that it's bisecting. But also if a point is equidistant from OB and OC, then it's on the side bisector of BC. And here, because OA is equal to OC, we know that O is on the side bisector of AC. And this is how we prove the first part of the problem, that this intersection exists and it's unique. Okay. Now, the uniqueness, maybe we haven't really gone ahead and proved it, but for now, what matter, this is a proof enough like that. We're taking for granted that these side bisectors do intersect at a point. So now with this in mind, we need to show the second part. If BAC is less than 90, can we prove that the angle BOC is equal to two times the angle BAC. And for this, we're going to be introduced to a technique called angle chasing. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here. So first things first, I don't have to construct O as I have before. I can just say O is the circumcenter, right? This is this unique point. And I know that OB, OC, and OA are all equal. Now, what do I know about triangles that have two sides which are equal? And the answer is I know they have the same angles here. I know this angle is the same as this angle because OA is OB. And this is a fact in geometry, in Euclidean geometry, actually to be more precise. Also if OB, because OB is OC, this angle is equal to this angle because OC is OA in the triangle OAC. We have that this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. Now, how do we get, how are we going to prove that this angle is twice the size of this one? And then now here's something that you actually are allowed to do in geometry. And that is you're allowed to give these angles variable names. You don't know whether this is 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 33, 10 times pi, whatever. You don't know how many degrees this is. So you can say, let this be X degrees, a variable X. And then I know this is also X degrees. Okay. I say, let this angle be Y degrees. Now X could be, X could be the same as Y. But we're just saying, let it be Y degrees. Then this one is also Y degrees. Now, what is the angle 
BAC. The angle BAC is equal to the angle BAO plus CAO is equal to X plus Y. Now you have a sort of represented this angle in terms of X and Y. And now we have to prove somehow that this is 2X plus 2Y. And how are we going to do that? And there are a couple of ways to go ahead and do this. One way is to say, let's call these angles Z and Z. And then what do we know about the triangle ABC? We know that the sum of the angles in the triangle ABC is equal to what? 180. And the sum of the angles is x plus y plus y plus z plus z plus x is 180. And when I combine the x's, the z's, the y's, I get that 2x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 180. Okay? And now from here, I can get x plus y plus z is 90. But I don't care for that. What is this angle BOC in the triangle BOC? And the answer is, well, if you look at it in terms of the angle BOC plus this angle plus this angle, which is plus Z, plus Z is equal to what? 180, because this is also a triangle. And now, given I have this is 180, and I have BOC plus 2 plus Z plus Z is 180. What does this give me? I'm actually right here to pause for two minutes and figure that sort of out. Just think, what do these two things give me? And the answer is, it gives you that you'll have BOC plus 2Z is equal to 180, which is equal to 2X plus 2Y plus 2Z. Now, what do these two things being equal give you? And the answer is they give you that the angle BOC is equal to 2x plus 2y because the two z's cancel out. Mind you, x, y, z, BOC, these are just names of variables, right? And I'm calling them x, y, and z just so it's easier to see what it is we're talking about. And now I have BOC is 2x plus 2y. Or in other words, the angle BOC is equal to 2 times x plus y. However, what is also x plus y? It's BAC. And so this is in fact equal to 2 times the angle BAC. And that is what we needed to prove. So take this in, take this in. This is meant to be a first sort of illustration and a lesson in angle chasing and what i will hope to give you with this is first how we can angle chase but also to define this point called the circumcenter it's a unique point which is equidistant to a b and c and it lies on the side by sectors of a b a c and b c and with that as always Thanks for problem solving.